I, well, I may need to apologize. I rather have questions in this presentation as opposed to answers. However, I think I saw uh, in the schedule that there will be another presentation with mainly answers and not questions. So I believe that we should complement each other pretty well. So um, let me just dive in. And if you have further questions to add to my set, feel free to do so, so our community has more things to work with. Um, well, uh, my name is Ili Kovancha. I work for the OpenStack Foundation, and basically that's how much I wanted to spend on the work stuff uh, when it comes to introductions. However, if anyone is interested in what OpenStack is and what the OpenStack Foundation is doing in way more details, then um, I'm happy to chat about that. Uh, by the way, is there anyone who never heard about OpenStack slash the OpenStack Foundation in the room? OK, I think, I think I'm good. <laughs> um, so uh, a little bit of background. Um, I'm one of the board members of the uh, chaos community, and I'm partially, fully kind of the little bit of the skeptical and pessimistic one. I like to combine this as the realistic person in the room. So I always like to ask back that, OK, if we do this here and if we define this, will that do more harm than good for us? So just basically trying to make sure that we always observe things from uh, different angles, uh, just to make sure that when we are moving, then we are actually really moving forward and we are sure uh, in what we are doing. Um, when it comes to like things as pessimism. Uh, is there more Hungarians in the room or just me? <laughs> All right, then, um, well, it's, it's in our blood. I, I swear, it's not just me. So most of us are, are like that. We, we are a little bit of on the, on the pessimistic side in that little valley somewhere in Europe still. Um, so yes, this is us. Um, so that, that's partially, I guess, how I got to this I love metrics because we all do. We all like to know what's happening around us. We all like to try to make sense of it and have an idea whether it's good or bad, uh, whether we need to take actions or whether things are going well. However, I think in my experience, it's just so easy to um, like get to uh, quick and not so good um, conclusions from numbers and metrics or use them in a, well, not too good or effective or um, useful way. And uh, that's kind of the hate part uh, in my life. Like just saying an example, like I love my mom, but she has like a four kilogram or, or which is I think translates to eight pounds or something range, which between the, oh my God, you're so thin and the, ooh, you, you put on some weight, you know. <laughs> like, that's, that's really not a big range, right? And uh, yeah, if we just get back to metrics, like, you get, you get to know how stressful my life is. Uh, but yeah, um, trying to stay healthy and so forth. Um, a little more background on, on this thing, on like metrics and life and just um, like how um, subjective, I think, data can be. Because we, I think we all just look at it that, okay, this is a data set, these are numbers, other data, so it must be objective, right? But it always depends on where you look at it from, what the context is, and whether or not you're um, lazy or not lazy to actually try to put it in context. So like, I went to, um, university, computer science. Uh, I got a job in IT. I travel a lot, so I fly oh, way, too, way too much. Um, but still, uh, have a reasonable salary. Uh, know all the amazing people, for example, in this room. Um, so, you know, that must have been the good choice, right? I mean, everything seems to click. Again, if you ask my mom, she will always tell you that she strongly believes that I should have pursued art because I love drawing on paper, not on computers. Computers are great, but not for drawing, uh, not in my opinion. Uh, but still, I may have just, you know, starved to death already or uh, would be starving somewhere, but maybe I will still be happier. I don't know. And the numbers will, I think, never tell me. The other example is I have a rather lowish blood pressure. So it's 90 over 60 when I have a lucky day. Sometimes it go down to 80 over 50. That's not comfortable, but still. Does that mean that I'm unhealthy? 
I don't think so. It's out of range, but you know, it's context. It's, it's how I am, it's how I am designed. Yeah, maybe there are some flaws in that design process. I made my complaints to my parents, but you know, this is where we are. Um, so whenever we do this uh, collecting data, put it into buckets, we always have to look at the bigger picture than just the data and the bucket itself, in my view. But again, feel free to agree or disagree with me. Um, and well, I had a corporate life before I joined the open source side, um, which still can be called corporate, uh, but I'm working for a non-profit organization at this point. Uh, who's working for for-profit organization in the room? Quite some. Um, anyone agrees with this? Or? Well, which unhealthy obsession? <laughs> oh, I, I, would, I would like to know that everything that Nithya said still stands. Uh, let's say that we are talking about another department. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but um, I have some experience from my uh, working for profit um, organizations that, that we kind of just went a little like overboard with this whole metrics thing. Like, your uh, performance report and just trying to figure out how to measure yourself and okay you're contributing to open source so let's say that if you have I don't know 10 merged commits in the next half year then it will be cool. Mm -hmm. Whatever like sure we can come up with a number but what, what will this be good for I don't think we ever actually um, define that part. Um, or when sometimes we wonder why people are doing things, whether it's because this is what their bonus is depending on, or whether this is something that is actually useful. Um, feel free to blame me for everything, but um, there are examples to this question popping up, and uh, it is unhealthy, and uh, it is still data driven so you know it must be objective it must be good we have all that data so it should be all right but it's still not because it still matters how you use the data and um, um, what are you getting getting out of it it always depends on on the context and there's some further unhealthy uh, behavior that I will just get to um, later so um, yep just from Slack from yesterday. There you go. I love my colleague and I love all my team and we all love data. So um, again, what I, what I said before, it doesn't mean that I hate data and I think that we should just live in the dark and never measure anything. Just go by your instincts and what you feel. Um, that is not the point. Um, the point is always uh, to look around check your environment and, and see uh, that which parts you think you would need more data because it seems to uh, be not working. And um, keep an eye on uh, the base levels and uh, make sure that whenever you're collecting something, you always look into the context and you always analyze it uh, thoroughly as opposed to just getting into uh, conclusions of things. So, yep, we love data, but can we have too much data? Like, what if we get too obsessed with data? And the only thing that we are doing is having, you know, lots of it and just dig into trying to see just from the data itself whether there's something wrong, whether we should be continuing something or stop doing it. Is it, is it always good to, like, overload ourselves with data. Like um, an example here, um, I have my lovely colleague Kendall here and we are running um, a training uh, like how to contribute to OpenStack, some parts of it also relevant to how to contribute to open source. And um, sometimes it comes up whether the training is efficient enough, uh, are we teaching the right things, is it working well. Um, so yeah, we can um, you know, we have the names of people who attended the training. We can look into whether they contributed to um, any of, uh, for example, the OpenStack Foundation projects. Uh, what if they didn't? Does that mean that the training is useless? Does that mean that we teach the wrong things? Or just does that mean that maybe the person or the people in that group, they are just not the developers who will do the direct contribution? 
And um, so from which point the training is valuable and from which point we say that, okay, we really need to change something. Because in my view, like if we just have, let's say, again, just a random number, one champion per year or something, when uh, I mean champion, the person in the company who goes back and says that, oh my God, I just understood how open source works, how we should do things, and basically change the culture and mindset in their department, whole company. So maybe you get <laughs> champions out of a training like this. How can you measure it? Can you? Can you always? Will you always know? Will, always, will the information always get back to you like in a reasonable time frame to say that, oh wow, so this is one outcome of this training. It is extremely useful, but how do you know? And what if you like stop continuing the training because you don't see this aspect and the contribution numbers are not really there that you just figured to, to put up there and you stop doing it and you will not get more champions that way, isn't it bad? I think it is. But again, something that can't be just directly, objectively measured just by looking at data. Um, just let me check where I am with time before. I have 20 minutes? Yep. Oh, okay, then it's all good. Um, so, unhealthy behaviors, gaming. We have numbers, we have dashboards out there, and um, people just love to game it for different reasons. Like uh, when it comes to corporate environments, um, sometimes you happen to have a manager and they see like different contribution numbers, like reviews, code comments, and these sort of things. So, um, and they are like, oh, okay, our company should be in the top, I don't know, X. And then, okay, people, we, have, we need to achieve this by the end of this month, so go and do reviews. I don't care how you do it, but you need to have 10 reviews per day. And what comes from this? Random plus ones, other random minus ones. Oh, the, the, the automated testing system failed, minus one. Like, yeah, I can see it myself. You don't have to comment on the review for me to see it. Or just like, you know, go and give plus ones or like thumbs up to various reviews. Um, what's the value in that? Basically nothing. Like sometimes people say that, yes, we had to practice how the tool works by pushing the same button 10 times every single day. I don't think so. And, uh, and then you get to the point of, yeah, so it wasn't really our idea and uh, we, don't, we don't even 100% know why we are doing this. And um, I'm not saying this to, uh, to say that individuals are bad or, or the manager is a bad person. Uh, they are rather uh, maybe a little ignorant. And on the other hand, we're all humans and uh, we tend to be lazy. And how easy it is to say that, yes, we are in the top 20 contributing organization based on, I don't know, number of proposed changes and like, 90% is a one character typo fix. Which is, you know, if, if you're just looking at the dashboard as, a, as an external person, uh, just an individual who's interested in it, yeah, there are numbers you can see, like ranking if you're interested in it. I personally was never too interested in like overall um, corporate rankings. Uh, I usually always looked at the data for myself to see that, you know, like, is it visible that I'm doing something or I should do something else? Um, but like, um, so you have this dashboard up, you look at it, it doesn't cost too much time. Like, cost you a few minutes, you go through that data. But just think about the other side. Like those people who are uh, caring about the project and maintaining it and has to deal with like all those patches that really just one character um, typo fix. Maybe it's even an automated system that does it, you never know. Um, so it actually has a lot of impact on a community. And uh, I assume that, that it's mainly not necessarily happening within a corporate organization, like when you look into internal software development and those metrics. Um, but when it comes to open source and numbers that are basically uh, visible to everyone, when people just jump onto like consequences um, easily, 
this can be really harmful because you basically uh, rob all those maintainers of their time because of looking into all these things. And I'm not saying that typo fixes are, are not valuable contributions, but like go through the whole thing and you know upload one or two patches depending on the size and how many typos you had to fix. Um, that is something that's, that's valuable as opposed to just, yep, jump on the numbers and, uh, and gain them because yeah, that, that, must be, that must be the good way of getting recognition in a community. No, that's really not. But again, we have those numbers out there and um, can we like come up with metrics that cannot be gained? I don't think so, but again, it is a question. Um, should we work on metrics that's harder to game or should we spend more time on like educating and just making sure that whenever people are looking into whatever numbers that we are uh, visualizing and and giving access to that they that they have an easier time to put it into context or or they have motivation to put it into context like telling them that okay if this number goes up to quick then it might actually points to in some cases, rather bad behavior than good. Can we do that, rather? Open questions. Um, and again, if we can do it, um, like, can the chaos community uh, work on this and help with that? Um, should we try to reach out to organizations and make sure uh, that they are all basically with us um, on this? I hope so, but again, open question for, for the community to, uh, to further, further think about. And um, yep, metrics and open source ecosystem. So um, personally, very personally, I have no idea at this point. I mean, um, we talk a lot about metrics, but um, I think most, in most cases, those metrics are um, like reviewed and looked at by companies, for example. So I rarely see like random individuals you know, in an open source community, and I don't mean chaos here because our goal is uh, to figure out this whole metrics thing, but in any other like software development community, we are not really chewing on these numbers. Like the developers are just sitting there and they are trying to like write the coolest code or the coolest feature and uh, sometimes the coolest documentation too. We all know that there's a lot of improvement <coughs> that needs to happen there. But still, um, how does it work in an open source ecosystem? What's the difference when, when it comes to metrics? Uh, like the same thing that, that we are looking at from more of a corporate perspective. How is it different when we are looking at it from, from the open source ecosystem's perspective? I, right now, don't necessarily have an answer to that. Uh, I'm working for a nonprofit organization. We are trying our best to support open source communities and just help them to um, like build and sustain a healthy uh, and balanced ecosystem, whatever healthy means and even balanced. Uh, but something that seems to be working. And uh, we don't really have the answer is at this point to how we can help with metrics to steer things to, to the right direction. We, we are doing analysis, reports, looking into numbers, but these, these are not always the same metrics. These are not always uh, the same questions that we ask, for example, at the end of a release cycle. Um, so we don't have the right answers yet. And again, just, just the, uh, the interesting point of how data can look different when you look at it from different points of view. Um, I don't have any issues with GitHub. Let's start with that. OctoCAD is also awesome. I love OctoCAD. Um, so <laughs> the point really is tools versus metrics. Like Nithya mentioned GitHub. You have projects there, pretty great, but um, that's not the only platform. And sometimes you just get like the first quote. So if your project is not on GitHub, it's not even open source, man. But <laughs> like OpenStack is not on GitHub. I mean, we mirror there because we kind of like the interface to browse code and then, and then uh, you end up with, okay, but you don't have enough stars there. What's up with the issue handling and pull requests? We don't use any of those. And OpenStack itself, what, 
20, 30 million lines of code, thousands of people contributing to it very openly. Um, and we are really proud of our four opens, um, open design, open development, uh, open source, and open community. And uh, we are really embracing that. So um, I don't know what else we could do uh, to just show and prove that it is, in fact, open source and it is, in fact, is not developed on GitHub. So it's not GitHub's fault. Um, it's more of a question of we have a tool out there which is really, really um, popular which is great. So um, it is really easy to look at those statistics that GitHub can show you, like the GitHub stars, or just when you talk about contributions, say, always say pull requests and issues, uh, because GitHub is a well-known tool. But it doesn't mean that, that all these terms um, and, uh, and metrics that GitHub and data that GitHub can give you is the only thing to look at and to measure the whole ecosystem based on what one particular tool <coughs> gives to you. Even if that is a, a really uh, famous and popular tool. It is a tool and it is a tool to design uh, which was designed for uh, collaboration and not to define like the, uh, the base set of metrics of how you measure open source contribution. So again, um, what can we do? Because we can't just walk around with like signs that GitHub stats are just one way of looking at things and they are not the only ones. So education is still one, one part, but, but how can we um, like work together on maybe change some perceptions, educate people about um, how this whole ecosystem is built up, um, and maybe just saying that tools are not everything. Tools are giving us um, a lot of help with uh, collaborating, doing, doing the things, developing the things that we, we believe in, we love, work together. Um, and this is what we use tools like GitHub for. So how we integrate data that's coming from GitHub into a view that is able to incorporate uh, all other uh, tools and processes and ways of working. How do we do that? Do we do that already today? Maybe I'm the only one who is experiencing this. Uh, like this little obsession with uh, GitHub stats themselves. I don't know. Do you have concerns like this, or maybe not concerns, questions like, like this, that how to, how to deal with this. Yeah, I can see people nodding around. So another thing that we can think about how to, how to address as a community who's trying to help the ecosystem to come up with ways to figure out how we are just moving to the right direction or we need to steer things around. So we have this amazing community, um, and uh, I figure that I will put up the, the mission uh, that what we are trying to do here. Uh, so there are a lot of questions out there. I don't personally think that we would have all the answers, but again, there are a couple of ways to, to tackle this, uh, and the community is working on both from um, metrics uh, per perspective, on uh, what to look into, how to look into, how to put it into context, but also looking into how to show examples um, to the ecosystem, how to provide some tooling around, how to provide ways to exchange data. So the mission is basically uh, a little high level on where we are trying to get to, just to figure out how to get a better view on what we might consider healthy, uh, what we might consider an active and balanced environment when it comes to open source uh, projects and uh, the whole open source ecosystem and what ways uh, we can uh, probably do that. Um, just a quick note on the mission as well as the goals. Um, so we are a community um, continuously and constantly evaluating ourselves as well. So I believe it was like a couple months ago when we had a discussion on the mailing list about the mission and the goals and whether it's still uh, like covering and in line with what we identified that we would like to do and achieve. So it is always something that 
everyone is uh, free to look into and raise a hand that, hey, I think we are doing a few things that's not captured here, and it would be important to do so to make sure that it's um, visible for everybody um, on uh, what we are trying to achieve and uh, also that we can find partners uh, for that work. Um, this is how the goals look like, uh, basically, again, work on metrics, work on software, um, work on things that, that's reproducible, um, and create uh, like an internal uh, loop. So work on metrics and software all together. So, oh, getting there. <laughs> Uh, so I will not spend a lot of time here, um, but as you can see, uh, we are trying to make sure that whatever we do, you can, you can try and test for yourself and see how the data is getting collected, visualized, and uh, all together trying to make sense of it. And all this open source available and uh, up for collaboration. So metrics part. This slide is more of a history. I believe I actually left uh, it in here from my presentation a year ago. So this is where we started from, uh, defined uh, a few groups of metrics that we thought that uh, would be valuable to start with, just to, again, get to the point of what is healthy, uh, what are the stages of a, of a community's and project's life cycle, um, how we can measure what's happening, um, how we can, again, make sense of it, identify dependencies, something that is really important, looking into risks and diversity and inclusion. Um, I don't think there's a way to, to leave that one out. So um, where the community has got uh, since then is uh, we are organizing our work into working groups, basically uh, looking into areas uh, with focused groups and uh, defining a process um, with which we are uh, discussing and designing and developing those metrics and again making sure that it all boils down to the software part. So there's a little reorganization going on within the community uh, and the two um, currently operating working groups are um, growth maturity and decline is one of them and uh, the process uh, is on this slide basically uh, defining focus areas uh, see what our goals are, um, identify questions uh, to reach those goals, and, uh, and uh, define metrics uh, to answer our questions. And uh, what I repeated at least, I don't know, 10, 15 times in the past 25 minutes, use cases. Put it into context. Give an example. So this is the metric. This is the data uh, from this data source. So how you interpret this data and how the metric is changing. Give a use case. The use case will tell you that why you're looking into that particular set of data. And it will also guide you how to evaluate based on the context. Um, so this is really important. And uh, so these two parts are kind of going um, hand in hand. And, um, uh, you can find uh, the GitHub repo for, for the working group on the slide, and I believe Georg already uploaded the slide or will upload it to the website. Um, so you will find this and, and the focus areas if this is something that you would like to join and participate in. Um, I just put up a, a diagram that only shows like lines of code and uh, you know guest activities uh, based on that. Again, uh, nice set of numbers. I, I don't think that it tells anything about, about the relationship of like, for example, Facebook and Android, nothing to do with each other, different numbers. So I don't think that we would like to rank that Facebook is way cooler because it has way more lines of code than Android. No, Android is a small thing. It has to fit on your mobile phone. So I really hope that they will not get up to like 61 uh, million lines of code. Um, so just an example again. Always put it into context while you're looking into it, uh, why it might look like how it does, and um, look into root cause, uh, context, background, big picture. Um, diversity and inclusion. I don't have a lot of time to to, work, uh, to talk about this. Um, so, but it's the interesting part is that I was looking for like one infographic or. A, 
or something to, to put, put up on the slide just to basically follow my concept of making it a bit more colorful than how my slides usually look like. And then I found that puzzle-like um, image. And uh, I think it gives a really good view that while I think three, four years ago, um, when I got to my point of open source involvement that I started to see other things than code and documentation contributions. Uh, so we were really, really uh, focused on gender diversity, but that's, you know, that's like this small piece of the puzzle. There are way more items here to consider, and there are three dots because I'm sure that there are aspects that we are not necessarily considering today. Maybe we need to, maybe we don't, I don't know. Maybe like a few years later we will have aliens on this planet and then we will have like a way bigger diagram to, to consider, I don't know. But again, just a lot of aspects to, to look into um, as we uh, progress with all this activity. And um, let me just jump to the next slide just to make sure that um, I finish in time. So. Um, the diversity and inclusion working group is uh, basically operating with the same process and principle as the uh, growth maturity decline working group. Uh, you can see the focus areas here. And uh, I just wanted to highlight a few things like recognition of good work. Um, that doesn't necessarily have to do anything with um, the diversity part. So um, like, for example, I grew up in an environment, I've never really learned to uh, like give positive feedback. I also have no idea how to receive it because I didn't. Like, as I said, I love my mom, but she always tells me when she thinks something is off. And um, because this is, this is just our like, way of we all grew up, kind of a tradition that if everything is fine, then I'm not saying anything. If something is wrong, then I will flag it to you that you need to you know, look into that and everything else is fine because I didn't say anything. But again, if you um, act like this in a like multicultural environment, that's not good. And just in general, like telling people that, hey, I think what you just did is pretty amazing. That is great. It feels, it feels great for the person who you told it to. They will know that, that that what they did was valuable to at least somebody, and uh, it will also feel good for you. But this is something that some of us need to need to learn. And um, well, I put up the, the put up the, the photo of the dude there because um, when when we talk about diversity, sometimes um, I remember uh, hearing a heated discussion where someone just like was attacking the middle-aged white dude in the room when he tried to be an ally uh, to women in the, in the room. It's like, oh, you can't be a good community manager because you're the middle-aged white guy. What does it have to do with it? Like, really? It's, it's not how it works. So again, when we, come, when we talk about diversity and inclusion, it really is about all of us. Like, not putting anybody into a bucket not even the middle-aged white dudes, which kind of became a stereotype in IT. Yep, we have a lot of them. Great. They're great people, and they are just people like everybody else. And saying that we are talking about diversity and inclusion and just figuring out how open we are and how we can help just people in general to join activities and um, be recognizable and so forth, that is really, really important. And the, um, the other diagram is um, just to remind myself to highlight that when we talk about diversity, uh, that's usually sensitive data. So whenever you're trying to figure these things out, uh, just always think why you're trying to get data and what you're trying to do with it. And if you have no idea, just don't do it. It is sensitive data, it is not a game. So again, think twice because it is a really important area. Uh, it just helps kind of humanity in general. So uh, let's try to do it the right way. Um, and we have software, as I mentioned. Um, I believe I'm running out of time and I'm also not super involved in the software side of things, but again, link here and uh, there are a few more links on this slide and 
the very important chaos.community link, you will find pointers from there to um, all the other amazing work that's ongoing. Uh, good thing is that uh, the, uh, there will be a presentation about the, the software parts in the afternoon as well as two tutorial sessions uh, for the two working groups. So you will be able to learn more details and how they operate and kind of try it out yourself how they work. Um, so please stay and uh, visit them and be active and uh, thank you. Thank you.